Hello Fight Fans, it's John Pollock with you with today's Mixed Martial Arts headlines and then John Ramdeen and Robin Black, they're going to be stepping in to chat about all of it. Today we're discussing a possible fight when the UFC returns to Vancouver. Another fight is confirmed for the tough Brazil finale in May and Dana White confirms Pettis versus Melendez for later this year. During a press tour in Puerto Rico, UFC President Dana White announced that Anthony Pettis and Gilbert Melendez will fight for the lightweight title on the year-end show following Tough 20 later this year. The two lightweights will serve as coaches on the show, featuring an all-female strawweight season to crown the division's first champion and is set to premiere in September. Ariel Hawani reported on UFC Tonight on Wednesday that there is a light heavyweight bout in the works between Daniel Cormier and Rafael Feijal Cavalcante for the July 5th show in Las Vegas at UFC 175. Cormier recently made his light heavyweight debut as he blew past Patrick Cummins at UFC 170, while Feijal holds a 1-1 one -one mark inside of the UFC's 205-pound division and coming off a victory over Igor Pokryach. Another fight being discussed for later this year was reported by MMAJunkie.com's Stephen Morocco in regards to a possible welterweight fight between Rory McDonald and Tyron Woodley for the UFC 174 card in Vancouver, British Columbia on June the 14th. Woodley looked to be the next title challenger following his win over Carlos Condit at UFC 171, but injuries to Johnny Hendricks will keep him on the shelf for some time. McDonald rebounded from his UFC 167 loss to Robbie Lawler with an impressive decision victory over Damian Maya in February of this year. And it was also reported on UFC Tonight that the Tough Brazil finale on May the 31st will feature a welterweight bout between Damian Maia and Mike Pierce. Maia is coming off the aforementioned loss to Roy McDonald, while Pierce's last fight was the source of lots of controversy, where he was submitted by a heel hook by Husamar Palharis, who would not relinquish the hold at the prompting of the official in October of last year. And I'm here with John Ramdeen and Robin Black. We have a number of uh, fights to discuss and possible fights to discuss. Let's just spin the wheel and it turns on the possible fight with Roy McDonald and Tyron Woodley, which they're angling for for the Vancouver show in June. Makes sense. That was the infamous fight with Roy McDonald and Carlos Condit. And right now, with Johnny Hendricks, really his status is up in the air right now. A lot of these guys want to keep busy. And with Roy McDonald and... Tyron Woodley, this fight to me represents, all right, who's getting the next title fight? Sure, but for me, I don't give a rat's ass who is fighting for the title. All I want to see is the best 170-pound fighters in the world going up against the other best 170-pound fighters in the world. This could be Rory McDonald versus Jake Ellenberger again. It could be so many fights. It's Tyron Woodley and Rory McDonald. I love it. Whoever wins this fight, uh, they, uh, there's so many. UFC 174, the fight that will make Randine give a rat's <laughs> Ass afterwards. Yeah. No, I just love it. Uh, to me, the title is irrelevant. It's just about awesome matchmaking, and that's what this is. Yeah, I love the fight too. I mean, it makes total sense. There's an argument that Rory is a bigger star or a more known star, and he should get the fight. Well, maybe he should fight this guy. Yeah. Then if he wins that, okay, you beat the top guy. If you lose that, well, maybe that makes this guy a star. Who gives a rat's ass, <laughs> right, John Ramsey? Because it's a good yeah, fight. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. I agree yeah. with you. Uh, we got confirmation, what everyone kind of knew already. Anthony Pettis, Gilbert Melendez for the year-end show. This is putting that title on ice for a significant amount of time, and we're starting to really see this now with all these shows. All of a sudden, Chris Weidman and Lyoto Machida fall out of that May 24th date. They're moved to July 5th. This is one of the first times I can remember where tickets have now gone on sale for that card without a main event. As of right now, JDS and Stipe Miocic are headlining this particular card. Pretty good fight, I do though. like that That's fight. That's a pretty yeah. good fight. And I get... Man, we're cans. Yeah. Right? We like every fight. We literally, you and I, like every single fight, pretty much. I, but I, you know what? I'm cool with that. Yeah, Shouldn't I, I, we? Yeah, like, these are the best fighters in the world. Didn't we they should just like announce these. another big fight for that card? Oh, I can't even remember they what it was. They have not, but... Nick Diaz has said he's ready to come back in May. To me, this makes all the sense in the world that, listen, Nick Diaz here has a chance. He will be in that headline position. You just pick a welterweight at choice. I don't think you'd give a rat's ass who he faces, but that's a headline fight. But you have so many cards right now, and here we have Melendez and Pettis. They're going to be off on the sidelines till December. It just seems like you're, we've said it so many times. You're serving all these different yeah. masters at this point. You need coaches on the Ultimate Fighter, but at the same time, you're icing the, your top two contenders now. 
You know, you look at almost kind of any business. Go and try to get something done at the DMV. You know what I mean? It's so confusing. There's so many layers of everything. And the UFC is kind of becoming like that. There's so many cards. I mean, Joe Silva and Sean Shelby must be pulling their hair out. They just got spreadsheets covering their living room, trying to figure stuff out. Like, it's, there's so much there. There's so much to talk about. Sometimes it's like, wow, this fight is great. That's fun to talk about. Other times it's like, holy crap, what are they going to do with these cards? It gets really muddy and really, really confusing. I'm sure, sure Gilbert Melendez and uh, Anthony Pettis probably want to get after it as soon as possible. They want, uh, you know, they're in the prime of their life. They want to make as much money as they possibly can right now. But I think it's actually a good thing right now for the lightweight division for this fight to happen at the end of the year so we can kind of sort out who the next number of challengers are at 155 pounds because, you know, you can make an argument that 155 pounds is the deepest deepest division in the entire sport it's right also now. Yep. it's also great for Gilbert Melendez yep. given that we know now that he gets a back end of the pay-per-view you know that year-end yeah. card is going to be loaded up oh, and for yeah. Melendez that's a huge payday yeah. for him he's not complaining yeah. at all yeah, yeah about this. for him for sure but you're right by the time we get there a lot of things will play out including I'm here and I think a lot of people are here TJ Grant yeah, and Nathan, Nate, Di exactly. Nathan Diaz yeah awesome. uh, I don't give a rat's ass what that one's about either because <laughs> exactly. that's a good fight <laughs> ultimately if we're fight fans the titles interesting what does this mean who's next all of that stuff is interesting but in the end when we sit down in front of our TVs and we want to be entertained it matters that there's two great fighters yeah, fighting. that's what it comes down yeah. to yeah quickly looking ahead to this weekend we have Bellator on Friday night I think that Alexander Shlomenko and Brennan Ward I am very much looking forward to this fight I think if you followed Brennan Ward through the last season's yep. middleweight tournament this guy surprised a lot of people very exciting style Shlomenko had an underrated fight of the year candidate last yeah. year with Brett Cooper that not a lot of people talked about come the year end award but that a very exciting card and then of course World Series of Fighting is coming back on Saturday night so I think this weekend is an opportunity to hey let's let's see some other stuff here and I think this Bellator card could surprise a lot of people yeah, particularly I, the main event yeah I like Brennan Ward but unfortunately the guy is nine and one in his mixed martial arts career Alexander Schlemenko has more, more than 50 fights I just think when it comes down to experience you know what you most know. fans will tell you uh, they don't give a rat's <laughs> ass what his record states yeah. give me an exciting fight on Friday night and we've got more coming up on Fight News Now Extra.